My name is obviously Terry Kelly. I'm from now, you'll see on the slides, Merseyside and West Lancashire Teaching Hospitals. Formerly uh, Southport and Homescare Hospital and now with Whiston and St. Helens. So we've only recently emerged last month into a different trust. So a lot of the slides you'll see are when I was in Southport and Homescare Trust and this experience that I'm here to talk about today is from when I was in Southport and Homescare Trust putting in e-portering systems or starting to uh, yeah, have a look at e-portering systems and eventually put an e-portering system in from the old paper and yeah, a, a basically a IT system that we had that was built by an IT uh, engineer in our trust who eventually left and nobody knew what to do with it. <laughs> so yeah, that created us a lot of fun. So yeah, basic introduction, systems that are in use and there's lots of systems out there while I was looking uh, at procuring an e-portering system, uh, I did go round to about five trusts and was amazed at the amount and the different types of e-portering systems within the NHS. So then we get to change, and we all know about change in the NHS and what happens when you get a lot of portland staff together and say right we're changing how you're working very challenging and we all know what what is said why are we changing for what reason are we changing why are we changing something that isn't broken we've all heard them all and yeah i got a lot of them within that implementing that change is always a challenge uh, but yeah moving forward you know now what you're looking for and you've you know, you know what you want, so you want to implement, implement that change. And then, yeah, the benefits uh, you actually reap from doing that change. Portland uh, and patient flow. Uh, well, we've heard today some of the important things uh, this morning about patient flow, moving patients on, even down to waste and everything that porters are actually uh, moving around the hospital. Uh, getting that waste out uh, and expecting. And I was quite interested to today, and I knew full well we had COVID, and our figures went through the roof of waste. And then you go, well, can I have a couple more porters? We're moving twice as much waste out of the hospital, and everyone looks at you blankly and says, oh, no, just carry on with what you've got. And then the figures come out, and it proves that we were doing a lot more work and these systems help you to prove that and go to your trust and to say to them, here are, here are the facts and figures of, the, of moving them round. So systems in use, I don't know what type of systems you've got in your trust, but uh, predominantly we had pen and paper and an in-house one that I explained, which was done by an IT guy. Uh, who left and then no one knew what to do with it. Pen and paper, a nightmare. Everything that came out of radiology, x-ray, CT scans, everything was done on pen and paper. Bits of papers with patients' names on, uh, as you can imagine from an IG uh, perspective. Uh, porters walking around with bits of papers going on towards where does that paper end up with a patient's name on it all that type of thing. It, very difficult to control and very difficult to manage. How many patients have you moved today from x-ray? Who knows, it was a bit of paper. Was it 10, 20, 50, 60? No one knew. There was no figures there. There was nothing that you could go to the trust and say to the board, I need more portering in x-ray because there was no real figures there to prove that. The same with, yeah, ED. ED is very similar, where you're moving a lot of patients. Uh, yeah, patient flow goes 
through the roof, the amount of patients coming in, how, how many did you move, who moved them, how it was moved, the timing of them moves, how many a day, you know, how many an hour, what time a day. It was very difficult to really go to the board and say, we need porters, more porters for these areas at certain times. So, and then the procured systems. Yeah, very interesting going round, and I don't think we do it enough, go to each other's trusts. We are all the NHS, but what I found when I joined the NHS, from a retail back background, that in retail, we went around our other stores and we looked at what they did and how they did it. What I find within the NHS is we don't do that. So I did, I went out deliberately and looked at five or six trusts and they all had a different portrait, e-system that they were putting in. Price ranges, again, were from hundreds of thousands to yet yeah, tens of thousands and all of them using different systems which I find from my background quite frightening really that we're doing all these different things and we're one NHS trust but we're not talking to each other or visiting each other and seeing what each other's doing and learning from another trust. I learned a hell of a lot by just going round a few trusts, seeing what they were doing, and was being told, as we all are told, uh, by you know, reps and people who come in, no, this is the system you need, this is what it will do, this is what it will give you. And then I go to a trust and say, oh, you've got this system in, oh, yeah, awful. Awful, awful system, and yet, yeah, you're getting told it's a great system. So I'd say we eventually ended up with a system, but I'd say go and look at the systems, learn from your colleagues and the other trusts of what you actually do. Change, well, yeah, why change? Yeah, the reasons are we, we needed to change. We need that data. We need the data of what we've just talked about this morning. How many... Uh, Bags, how many waste cupboards are you emptying per day? How often a day? How much is coming out of them? Perfectly honest with you, didn't have a clue. The waste porters went out there, they emptied the cupboards. There was no real proper routine to it. Uh, yeah, generally they came in of the morning. Uh, the afternoon porters came in, they emptied it in the evening. What type of waste was coming out? How often it was coming out? Didn't have a clue. X-ray, we just talked about radiology. How many times are you moving a patient from a ward to radiology and back again from ED? How many patients are you moving? Didn't have a clue. It was all on paper. And all you could do was go to radiology and say, right, how many patients uh, have we moved today and try and get from radiology? What that, what that didn't tell us is how many times did we go for a patient and that patient wasn't even on that ward. The patients had been moved. How many times did we go and the patient wasn't ready because the patient was in the shower or having something so we'd actually go there and the patient wasn't even ready for us. To, so we'd go back down again and I have to go back for the patient. There was nothing there that we could look at to see any data at all of what we were doing and how we were doing it and how well we were doing it. Didn't have a clue. Were we doing it right? All we got is, well, the porter didn't turn off for this patient, or the porter didn't do this. Not that the fact that we didn't know about it or the porter hadn't been given this little piece of paper to go and get that patient from the ward. But what I found was it was always Porter and false. It was the porters that weren't doing the job. And yeah, you, you effectively cannot say, no, it wasn't our fault. Because there's nothing there to give you that information or give you that data to say, in natural fact, we did go for that patient, or the patient wasn't ready. And that's why the patient hasn't gone down. The patient was in a shower. The patient was having a meal. 
that's, we actually did go for the patient, but we were told the patient wasn't ready, so we came away. But what we were told is you've not been for that patient. So we needed to change. We have to change. All of us have to change. So we've got information there. So when we're, when we're doing our ERIC reports or we're doing KPIs, we know what data, we know exactly what we're doing, uh, when we're doing it, what time we're doing it, even down to the fact that, you know, the porters came in at 8 o'clock. Was that right to have five porters in at 8 o'clock? Nobody knew. We had five porters in, but were they actually doing anything? Were they needed? But then suddenly we get to half past 11 and mayhem breaks and we haven't got enough pe pe uh, porters about because patients need moving. So is it right, have we got the right mix of time with, when the porters do come in and when we need them? So it's all information there that I just didn't have, and I was getting asked questions that really I couldn't answer. You know, I was saying, you know, for the Eric report, yeah, we have three patients, uh, three porters who are in X-ray. One of them's in CT scan. Uh, so that's the data I was given. I couldn't say really times and actual hours when them patients were being moved. So we had to change. And as we all know, patient safety. We were getting day texts by the minute that a patient hadn't been moved, a patient had been waiting 20 minutes to be returned from x ray back to a ward. We, we just, that was basically the porter and team leader going down there, speaking to x ray and radiology and saying, you know, how long has the patient been there? Who did you tell to t take the patient back? But it was always, you never took the patient back. The patient waited there 20 minutes. So we had to change, and patient care is, you know, predominantly a reason why we should be changing as well. So we can see that data, and we can answer them questions. But yeah, you've got to then do the change. Um, NHS and let's change, we all know what happens. So, yeah, the only person that likes to change is a baby, because it wants changing. We, we don't like it. There's every reason in the book why we shouldn't break it, why we shouldn't do it. It's, it's, it's been like this for the last five years, and, you know, why are you changing it? And it was just unbelievable the actual sort of change how people didn't want to change why they didn't see we needed to go forward and we need to have these answers and these figures so timeline the next thing you need to do is you've got to go out there you've got to look and this is what i say it, that's your timeline. It's not my timeline. It's your timeline to go and look and see the different uh, systems out there that you can procure, and there are lots of them. So you need to make sure you pick the right system uh, to do that change. You've got to communicate in that timeline to your users. And the main users that we find are going to be ED and your radiology departments. That's where a lot of your movement's going to be. And they need to buy into this, and you need to talk to them to buy into it. The other person or the other team that you need to help you when you're doing this, I found the next biggest team you need is your IT team. If your IT team on on board, which our IT team went at the beginning, it, you will, it will never happen. You need to get your IT team involved in, in doing this. So we then have to switch over. Switching over for us was relatively easy. We were switching over from bits of paper and going to a system that uh, reports us. 
We, we used, in the end, we used a My Portland system, which we uh, could actually put on the screen what type of job, down to the detail of the type of job, what the porter needed, did he need a wheelchair with him, did that patient need to be moved on a bed, what type of patient were they moving, were they moving a patient with dementia, were we moving a patient uh, that had COVID, what type of patients uh, where we move, it gives us everything, it can give you. Uh, so when we're looking at reports, we can report down to how many jobs has that porter done that day? How many jobs has come from x-ray? How many jobs have come from a ward? How many times have you gone to a ward and that patient wasn't ready at that ward? So you can go to that ward manager and actually report to that ward manager. We've been, you know, 10 times this week and every time we come the patient isn't ready. So it gives you a vast amount of information now that you can go back to these ward managers and the rest of the teams to try and improve it and improve. And that's what it's all about, improvements, improvements in patient care. So, communicating to them users, uh, again, we involved X-Ray in a big way where they actually came to the Porton uh, training sessions for, for the actual system so that they were involved at the very beginning. Yet, yeah, like everything else, everyone had the, the questions, what will go wrong, it might go wrong, it might go wrong, we're not really happy with this, but by communicating to them users and them feeling that they were involved at the beginning made it a lot easier as we progressed. And it meant that as a team of, uh, from all them departments, nurses from all wards, different wards who were involved in it, could see what was gonna happen. It gave us a better understanding and them a better understanding of what this change was going to give them to make it better and easier for them. So yeah, a lot of training, uh, a lot of uh, getting, getting them involved, playing about with the system for you know a couple of weeks beforehand. So that system goes in, they can play about with it, they can go onto the system, they can see how it works. So we can then get, make sure that when we hit the button and we say we're, go, we're going to now roll it out to everyone, that everybody is aware of, of what the system does and then to switch over. Then on a Monday morning, a Sunday morning, we then say, right, we're going to go live with this system now. And you go live with the system. And yeah, there's always the negatives when you feel it's finding them little things out at the, the beginning when you uh, switch over, finding all them little negatives from people and then going back to them and correcting them and making it right. So, yeah, we do need, we're in this, uh, as we've heard, we need these people that you or when you go out there and you look f to procure a system, you need to make sure that, yeah, it's a two-way thing with the system, the system users and the person who's providing that system, that they help, they can change things for you and they can develop that for you to what the trust needs are, your trust needs and what the ward needs are, what x-rays needs are. And we had quite a bit of changes, very minor changes, but it made it so much better and so much easier uh, going forward with the system. Radiology, and I say, ED departments are going to be your main users. We're now in the development stage uh, with our provider that we're going to do, because ED is so busy, so difficult, that we're going to do touch screen for them. So we're already moving it forward so that we, instead of them having to type in an actual job, they can just bang, bang, bang on a touch screen, done, 
off it goes and it goes to the porter. Now, there's different ways you can put that information to the porter. We chose radios. You can have handheld iPhones and it comes through to the porter. So what, what actually happens with our system, with a radio, it goes direct to the porter's radio. He accepts the job. We then know that that job's accepted on the screen. He then goes off, he gets to the ward, and he says, now I'm starting that job. So he accepts it, he starts it, we now he's know he started the job. He's now moving that patient from whatever ward to the x-ray department. When he gets there, simple, he presses another button and he says, I've now finished that job. That job, that patient is now with x-ray. So when we look back in our information, we know how long it took him. We know when he started it, his walking time from A to B to drop that patient off. And then, again, simplify it. X-ray are usually, or radiology, are usually the, the one who's calling them patients. So what they can do on the system to make it very easy is they put that job on the night before. Two weeks before, if they know, they can actually put it forward, put a certain time that patient wants to be. So the night before, they can load up, we want these patients, we want this one at nine o'clock, this one at 10 past nine, this one at quarter past nine, and then, when they've done the patient, instead of typing all, that all in again, all they do is after do the x-ray, do the CT scan, press a button and say, that patient's now ready to return. Don't have to put any information on. We know that pa where that patient come from and we're gonna return that patient. So yeah, it gives you a lot of information uh, and you can get right down to the nitty gritty how many times a ward does uh, call a patient, uh, how many times you move a patient from ED. So it's actually all the data, when you're asked about that data, you can produce that data right down to the minute. Data sexes, as we know, I was getting oh, four or five uh, data sexes about patients a week, suddenly it went down. Once we then went with the system, we could go down into the system and say to them, in actual fact, no, you actually asked for that patient to be moved at one o'clock and the patient was picked up at 1.05, where beforehand we were getting told, oh, the patient has been waiting 20 minutes. No, the same with your bloods, the same with your drugs, the same with your everything that they request, they put on the system. So I know beforehand, uh, I'd get pathology saying, oh, these bloods uh, have been on the ward uh, for two hours, your patient, your porter never picked them up. So when I look, I say, mm, well, a natural fact, the ward put it on at one o'clock and the porter picked it up at 1.05. So if there is an issue with them bloods, it's been before we were involved in it because they were actually dropped off in patho pathology at 1010. So it's nothing to do with us. So when you then go back to them, when you get a datex, you give them all this information, you'd be amazed at how suddenly them datexes drop because they know you've got all that information. So it's then managing that information and how we manage that information. It's, it's, we, you can get that information, lots of information, and the information you use and how you use it. Uh, more flexibility. You know when you need your porters in. I didn't know when I took over the porter in when them porters... Uh, did, did I have the right amount of porters at 8 o'clock? Well, a natural fact... I had too many at eight o'clock because when I looked at the jobs in the system, it wasn't starting till actually nine o'clock. So I only needed a porter in at eight o'clock to pick up them jobs and I bring the three of them in at nine o'clock when the work did start, which meant that afterwards we had them later when a lot of that work 
uh, we were struggling at the end because we didn't have enough porters. Now we had them porters at the right time at the end as well. So it's all about getting that information, using it, uh, increasing your productivity, because that's what it does. It makes it all easier, uh, even down to you know your meal trolleys. Everything that you're doing, you can now say to someone, uh, oh, you know, the meals, they got to the ward. Uh, they were not enough for... Well, yeah, well, we got the actual meal trolley at 12 o'clock, and it got to the ward at 12.05. And there it all is, there in information. So if there's anything wrong with the meal, it was either it was left on the ward before it was given out, or something happened before that. So you have that information right in front of you. So data driven improvements, that's what it's all about. You need that data. And the only, only way you can get that data, you have to move from this paper and these systems that are not driving and giving you the data so that you can go back to your trust board and prove that you need more portering or vice versa. You need less at certain times of the day, but you at least you're making a judgment on you know by the movement of patients, drugs, pathology, everything that a port is doing, moving chairs, moving tables, you know exactly what they're doing, when they're doing it, and how they're moving it. So yeah, massive improvements, and that's what this is about. It's about, uh, yeah, getting that data for yourselves so you're making a judgment uh, on actual facts and figures. The future, what's the future going to be? We don't know. It's going to be glasses and it'll come to you. Is it going to be on a smart watch? And you'll get the job on a smart watch. We all know ourselves uh, as we've gone forward. Would we all believe, you know, 20 years ago we'd be walking around with mobile phones and they'd be directing us from one location to another location to here today? We, we, the future we don't know, but we've got to start and we need to get into this to be able to start. You need to be getting all this data and that, this electronics to start from somewhere. So, yeah, that's why we moved on. But the future, who knows? So, for me, it was, it was a much needed change. Uh, we had to change. I took over Portland uh, from uh, being uh, the logistics manager, transport and everything else. Portland joining our team. And, you know, I didn't have a clue what were these porters doing. I, you know, I knew what porters did, but now I had, to, I had no detail at all of what them porters, so I needed something. And I, there, was, there was no information there. It was all written on a bit of paper. So, yeah, and to me, it's made a massive difference when I now can go to the board and say to the board, yeah, we need an extra X-ray porter. We need another two people, which we've just got and proven in ED, working all through the night. So we need a porter through the night. So, but we could go with the facts and figures and prove there's the figures, this is what we need. You can't argue with it. It's there in black and white. You've moved, you know, 50 patients through the night and um, you know you've got one porter it's not enough so you get another porter so that's what you need and the difference to me was yeah unbelievable so yeah that was my little experience and thank you very much for listening <laughs>